a nymph right there. There's another nymph right here. These ticks are everywhere. Um, they're out in the middle of the woods. They're right next to people's houses. They're right next to roads. Um, that's one of the reasons why Lyme disease is the threat that it is. And so these nymphal ticks, the stage that we just pulled off the cloth, are responsible for the vast majority of Lyme disease cases and other tick-borne diseases as well. Invulnerable and camouflaged, perched atop blades of grass, patiently lying in wait, the tick is a solitary hunter. It can wait for weeks before attaching itself to its prey. It's armed with dual appendages called chelicerae and a harpoon-like hippostome. The chelicerae pull themselves into the skin. Then the hippostome pushes itself between them, piercing a vein and allowing the tick to nourish itself with blood. This meal can last several days. As it becomes filled with blood, the tick can grow to the size of a peanut. But this minuscule vampire is only dangerous if it's infected with a bacteria. The combination of these villains, the tick and the bacteria, results in the propagation of Lyme disease. The tick inoculates its host with Borrelia bacteria. The full name is Borrelia burkdorferi. The inoculation occurs in the skin. A circular rash may appear in two-thirds of the cases. It doesn't remain constant. Often, it isn't taken seriously by a doctor or a pharmacist or a family member. It's considered a simple insect bite and it goes untreated. If untreated, the disease evolves for several weeks in a subacute form. Then, within months or years, the disease becomes chronic. The disease will evolve in this manner for 10 or 20 years, or for a lifetime, if the patient remains unaware and the Lyme disease goes untreated.